from farm animals is an important and versatile resource, full of soil-building organic matter and nutrients. This makes manure an extremely valuable plant fertilizer in crop production. Liquid and solid manure contain nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium, the major nutrients needed for plant growth. This balancing act is known as nutrient management. The documents that support and validate the nutrient management process are known as a Nutrient Management Plan, or NMP. NMPs are recommended for all farms, but some farms are required to develop them. Nutrient management involves a number of practices, including collecting and storing manure responsibly, diverting clean water, and keeping good records. This video will focus on the steps for managing nutrients during the land application of manure. The first step is to estimate the total amount of each nutrient needed based on the planned crop and projected yield. In most states, resources such as University Extension can help with these estimates. Second, the NMP must account for plant available nutrients that are already present or likely to become available during the growing season. This requires the following. 1. Analyze soil samples to see which plant available nutrients are already present in the field. 2. Account for nitrogen credits from manure applications made in the past three or four years. 3. If a nitrogen fixing legume crop, such as alfalfa or soybeans, was grown in the field the previous year, calculate the credit. And 4. Determine if the water used for irrigation contains enough nitrate nitrogen to be counted as a nitrogen input. Nutrient management planning is not an exact science. Plants and soil are affected by variables such as weather and pests. Even fields tended with best management practices can lose some nutrients. To account for this, most NNPs allow a reasonable margin of safety for the application of extra nutrients. After looking at crop needs and what nutrients are already in the field, the next step is calculating the amount of commercial fertilizer and or manure that is needed. The nitrogen and phosphorus content of most commercial fertilizer is well known, making it easy to calculate application rates. The nutrient content of manure, however, varies greatly because of differences in animal species, manure handling and storage practices, and other factors. Laboratory analysis can show how much nitrogen and phosphorus is in a manure sample, as well as how much of the nitrogen is organic and how much is in plant-available forms. Part of the organic nitrogen will be mineralized into plant-available forms in the first year, but some won't be available until the second, third, or possibly even fourth year. An NMP documents more than application rates. Other components include maps, weather, calibration of manure application equipment, setbacks from sensitive areas like wellheads or streams, and emergency plans. Once the NMP is on paper, implementing the plan on the farm may present a number of challenges. While manure has all three of the major crop nutrients, it does not necessarily contain them in the right ratios needed by the crop. If manure is applied at a rate that meets the crop's nitrogen needs, the crop almost certainly will end up receiving more phosphorus than it can use. Manure is very bulky and expensive to transport relative to commercial fertilizer. This is why, historically, most manure has been applied to fields very close to the animal feeding area. If manure is continually applied to these same fields, this extra phosphorus can build up to levels that present risks to nearby bodies of water. It can be transported to water in surface runoff or through tile drains. Preventing additional phosphorus buildup can be managed with several strategies. One is to rotate manure application. This means waiting perhaps three years between manure applications in order to allow crops more time to use up the phosphorus that was applied. Another option is to lower the manure application rate to a level that applies only as much phosphorus as the crop will use that year. In most states, a field-specific risk assessment tool called a phosphorus index, or P-index, 
can be used to determine if manure can be applied at a full nitrogen-based rate or lowered to a phosphorus-based rate. In some cases, the p-index may show that phosphorus application, manure or otherwise, should be decreased or discontinued. Most of these strategies involve finding more fields for manure application, either on the farm or by working with neighbors. This becomes more difficult in areas where many animal feeding operations are located close together. One solution is for animal and crop farmers to connect and form manure share programs so that there are more fields available for manure application rotation. Another solution could be technology that extracts or concentrates manure nutrients into a form that is more easily transported. This is currently expensive and not yet feasible for many farms, but could gain ground in the future. The NMP is more than just a tool. It is an ongoing process. Calculating a plan on paper is important, but it is only the beginning. An NMP should be revisited and updated on a regular basis. If done properly, the process will responsibly reflect the nutrients moving in and out of the system. This helps farmers produce feed and food while protecting water quality. And that is something we can all get behind.